We're ready to do our first wash on our second sculpture here. It's the fish. I'm looking to do a wash on the scales here. I've decided that a blue, I have a nice blue here, a Windsor Newton Professional Acrylic, so it's super vibrant. Um, and a green would be good. Again, I have a couple greens that I like. Um, this is a Windsor Newton acrylic that's going to be a little bit thinner than this color, which I really like. Uh, again, it's a heavy body, so it's going to be thicker and best uh, not suited for uh, the wash. I'll put this on as a second or tertiary coat. And also some of this um, craft paint, which it's cheap and um, ultimately is going to have a less... Uh, vibrant pigment. It's going to look more plastic-like than these other professional paints, but it is a color that I want, so I'm going to use it. Um, I have a matte medium here. I'm going to mix this with a, a parchment color uh, of this brand, Artist Loft. Uh, it's a cheaper paint, but again, it's, it's going to do just fine. I'm going to do a thicker wash on the bottom here, so I'm going to go ahead and get started with that. Uh, brushes, again, are a nice soft tipped wash. Uh, brush to put the wash on. Um, it's a pair to pull some color back off. And then I have a thicker, bigger brush here that I'm going to be using for the white um, to have more coverage. I'm aiming for an aqua color. So I'm using the green and the blue a little bit at a time to mix up what I want. And I know that I need it to be a little darker, actually, than what I'm aiming for because it's going to be watered down. So the water is going to dilute the vibrancy of the color here. I'm going to be a little more loose on this application because all of these scales are pretty much the same thing. And I'm just really looking to get that color into the crevices. And it's looking beautiful, just the color I wanted. With that said, since I only mixed up so much right down here, I'm gonna apply it to both sides. Try to get an even coat because I need to pre I need to mix that again, and it's it's unlikely that I'm gonna continue to mix the same color that I'm really digging. So I'm gonna try to float it uh, and cover as much as I can here, and then the next layer I'll do even as well, and that'll help keep your piece balanced. So first wash, I'm going on pretty, pretty quickly, pretty swiftly here. Um, in this case, I'm not really focused on the craftsmanship because I'm layering this again. And I'm just looking to get the paint in all of those cracks. So I want to hide all the clay. You shouldn't have any of your clay, uh, that, that rich um, orange clay color exposed for your critique. Everything should be covered and painted. Go a little bit around the eye here too. Down in here a bit. Do that in the same same over here. See, I'm I kind of exhausted my color here in my own palette. And by the way, these palettes are just um, caps to plastic containers, so I, I recommend saving those and using them. They work great, and you just uh, discard them when you're done. Or once the paint dries, actually just paint. You know, use it again and paint over it. I'm gonna do a little blending so I don't have any hard lines on here yet. Some splatters here and there. Okay, that looks pretty good. It's um, wet, so it will not be this dark as it dries, but just my uh, first coat on there. Recommend keeping some paper towels close by too. In this instance, you know, I can wipe off some of that paint I don't want on there. Got some over here. I'll let that sit as I mix up. Now this is the uh, Liquitex uh, Matte Medium. Uh, it'll say on the back, you know, um, the matte or gloss brilliancy, the transparency and the fluidity, which are good to know as you mix up with your color. This is pretty, Pretty fluid, so just a little bit goes a long way. And a little paint goes a long way too. Now, when I'm mixing paint with a medium, I'm gonna wanna use a palette knife. And you really wanna get this thoroughly uh, mixed together as if um, 
you know, one wouldn't work without the other. So you want it, uh, all of your paint to have this medium in it so it's consistent as you apply it on your sculpture. You don't want a, a one area that doesn't have the uh, medium. Uh, it, it will look a little bit different. It will apply a little bit different as well. So again, this helps to apply. You might be able to see it's smoother on you know the palette. It's gonna apply to my sculpture a lot smoother, a lot easier. I'm still uh, likely to use water here um, just because, again, I want to wash this on. So it, it's going to go on thicker, and that's the point, but um, I'd rather add more paint later than have to try to paint over what I have. Around the mouth here, I'm not super worried. It will be painted over. I just want to get these gills and the bottom of my sculpture covered really well because I know I want it white and it's it's it needs to be a little bit thicker here uh, because I used a red primer I need to go with a uh, heavier paint to cover that up I do want the red primer it was a intentional choice here and you'll see why in a minute so now I'm gonna go back and wipe some of this back down I'm gonna just use a brush that I had because I don't want it compl that thick yet so I'm gonna brush this in and pull some of this back off. It's a wash, so it's meant to go in the crevices and not necessarily sit on the surface right now. I'll build that up later. So I'm looking for coverage around here. I think I'm gonna, I have extra paint, so I'm, I'm just gonna spread it around right now. Yeah, it's a little thick there. You can see right there, it's it's a little heavier than what I want on my first go. So I'll just tuck that down. And I am going to go back over this with a darker wash so I can get the dark in there, but I need it, I need it to be somewhat um, lighter than what it already is. So I'm lightening it up here, a quick wash. All right, 